All right, so you want patience and you want it now. Yeah, don't we all? So how do you do that? Well, as I often preach, the, this world we live in, this microwave society, in fact, ironically, you know, it's called the microwave society, bought a brand new house, spent a whole bunch of money, spent a S ton on appliances. I had no idea how expensive appliances are nowadays, okay? And we spent a fortune on a little microwave, goes into the cabinet, it's beautiful, looks nice, right? This thing works. It takes like a minute instead of 30 seconds to heat up my food. I'm like, can you believe that? I have to wait an extra 15 to 30 seconds. This thing is slow. I'm, I, I just can't believe it. But this is the microwave society we have been trained in, and it's only getting worse. And without digressing too far, and I don't think I have it in front of me, so I'll have to find it. But um. It's probably in the bathroom, <laughs> a little TMI, right? But I'm reading another one of these, and I don't know if you call it behavioral science or behavioral finance, but for a while I said I'm not gonna read anymore because they all sound the same. But now I find that even though they sound the same, they are beginning to click a little bit more and more with me. And a lot of it reaffirms the things that I've read before. And this one, you know, my, my biggest argument is they, they all tend to glom onto and basically rehash the thinking fast and slow, which I would strongly urge you to read. And someday I'm going to try to sit down and read the whole thing again. It's like 600 pages, but it's really, a, it's really a good read too. I definitely will read that one. But anyway, the new book, I forget the name of it. I'll have it for you next week and hopefully I'll be done or certainly further into it. But one of the things they keep rehashing over and over again, in addition to Tversky and uh, what is it, Kennerman, who did the think it's fast and slow, but one of the things they keep talking about is that society has moved so fast that evolution cannot keep up. So our brains are still thinking a couple thousand years ago, maybe even 10,000 years ago, right? They hadn't caught up. On an evolutionary scale, that's not that much time. And what's that, what's that law? I forget the name of it, but there's some law in semiconductors like every so many years, the technology doubles or the speed doubles. And... Uh, anyway, but it's along those lines. So that technology is moving that fast. So we do have a problem with society putting this pressure on us to become less and less patients, to make us really crappy traders. So how do you get that patience? Well, one thing you have to really embrace, and it's something I've learned about, and I probably got it out the Kirk report a year or so ago, but I think he was talking about a crazier in James Clear book, which is a good book, by the way. It's a, it's on habit. I'm, I'm going to mention another book I suggest you read on habit, although I do have some a little bit of a beef with it, but we'll get to that. A crazier, as I've stated before, is a state of mind in which someone acts against their better judgment through the weakness of will. Okay. You break your diet and you eat the fries or drink the beer or whatever the case may be. You give in to the siren call of day trading. You're like a moth to the screen. And as I've said before, it's kind of like the going back to, is it, uh, was it in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes or where, where did Paul say, that or maybe Romans where he said that he knows he's doing the wrong thing but he does it anyway and I actually did a whole article and actually a series of articles and webinars just on that somebody sent me this email sent me a, an email I should say and said hey I you know if you like Paul and that made it to Traders Magazine and uh, was published in many different countries and many different languages and Good stuff, I think, if I say so myself. But all that, and that's before I even knew what a crazy was. And again, it's a state of mind in which someone acts in their better judgment through the weakness of will. Now, will, by the way, can be weakened. And I'm going to explain that in just one second. So James Clear, from his book, and I think it was Atomic Habits. In fact, I know it was. Go to www.davelander.com slash books dash two dash read. And if you click on that book, I think I'll make 13 cents. And I'd appreciate if you do that. It's better than a poke in the eye. 
anyway, he says a crazy state of state of acting against your better judgment. It is when you do one thing, even though you know you should do something else. Acrasia is what prevents you from following through on what you set out to do. Now, I'm going to give you a couple little examples of commitment devices as it relate to trading. But you need some sort of commitment device to make sure you do the right thing. And James Clear went on to say that it's not so much about making a good habit easy it's more about making a bad habit hard. But if you think about it, it's actually both. So I'll give you a case in point. Yesterday, I was staring at the screen, watching the KOD, <laughs> and uh, attempted to make additional trades after I'd already made some trades. And my wife's like, let's go for a walk. I'm like, ah, I'm kind of busy. I got a, I'm on the deadline, and I don't think I'm... I think I got done about nine last night. It's a crazy day, but I knew if I went for a walk, I'd be even later, but I also later getting done. But I also knew that if I didn't go for a walk, I would waste the hour I would waste walking because it was, I'd get back right before the close. I'd waste that hour anyway, not getting anything done and staring at a stupid screen. So I went for a walk, okay? And not always, but a lot of times when I walk away from my screens, it is profitable. And that's one of the rewards of going out and get a little exercise sometimes is it gets you away from that screen. It keeps you from doing what you shouldn't do. Now, you have to do what you have to do. You have to get your orders in. You have to get your stops in. You have to get your initial profit targets in when necessary. But other than that, 99% of the time, there's nothing to do. I placed a few orders this morning and there's nothing to do now. That's why I'm giving a webinar. Now, one thing I learned through a book called Atomic Habits is that willpower gets used up. I'm sorry, this is not Atomic Habits. It's the power of habit. What we do, why we do, what we do in life and in business. Dalio from Principles strongly urged the readers of his book to read this book. He thought it was fantastic. Well, if a billionaire who made a billion, especially since he made his billions trading, tells me to read a book, I'm gonna read a book, okay? And where I got a little disappointed in it in that, I mean, it's a fantastic book and I strongly urge you to recommend it and I'll have to put it in a books to read, but he, he went into kind of a long-winded, very detailed into these stories, which I think he could have summarized a little bit better to make his point about habits and such. And then he finally got to the, the really good stuff. The book started really good, and then he went to a bunch of stories, which are, the stories were very interesting in and of themselves, but it was a long run for a somewhat short slide. However, towards the end of the book, it started getting really good. He started pulling all together and what you could do and what you should do. And then it ended, unfortunately. The last couple of pages were like, man, this is great. I'm now we're getting to the meat. We're really getting to it. And then he has like an afterword, and then he talks about some other things, and there's another 20 or 30 pages. And that's pretty good too. So I think I think this book could be so much better if he took that last section plus everything he's learned since and come out with a new version of this. Put all that stuff in the back in the middle of the book. And I think it would be much better. But overall, it's a good book. And I know I'm kind of ripping it to shreds, but I'm kind of ripping it to shreds because I liked it and I think it could be much better. In fact, I'm reading a book now about ready to throw against the wall, Victor Niederhofer's book, Practical Speculation. And that one I don't think I'm going to recommend unless there's something earth shattering further in. But I digress. Anyway, and the power of habit, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Duig, Duig, Charles Duig. And I hope, you know, my apologies, Charles, for if I butchered that, was had a conversation, I should say, with Mark Muravin. And, and I hope I got your name right too, Mark. One of the things that he said, because Mark did this, uh, my buddy Mark, he did this experiment with radishes and freshly baked cookies. And there's been a lot of other of these experiments that have been done throughout the years. And one thing he determined is that the longer 
you are disciplined, the less likely you will be to continue to be disciplined. Now, that's like on a daily basis. So, for instance, he said, willpower isn't just a skill, it's a muscle. Like the muscles in your arms and legs, and it gets tired. Like, your muscles, like the muscles in your arms and legs, it gets tired and as it works harder. So there's less power left over for other things. So you kind of get worn down at the end of the day. And he gave an example of, let's say you want to start exercising after work, you want to go for a jog or whatever. Well, you're going to have to save up a little willpower during the day. If you're grinding down all day and you've had all this willpower used up, then you're not going to have enough willpower to exercise. I know that if I'm going to, like, there's been a few days where I've had good intentions and believe it or not, I know you see me like this guy doesn't exercise. Like, well, I do, but I also eat a lot. <laughs> you can't outmove your mouth. But the point is, I know that if I am going to exercise, I'm going to have to get it done probably in the morning. By the time I wait for afternoon, I start putting it off and more and more things. And then by the end of the day, I just, I'm out of willpower. I have no willpower left to go exercise. So it does get used up, and you have to be cognizant of that fact. And there's a lot of little things you could do and make them habit, little commitment devices, and we'll get to a few of those in one second. But there's a lot of these little commitment devices, like, for instance, and I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I will not allow myself to, you know, I like to eat, as I just said. That's why they call me Big Dave. But I will not allow myself to eat breakfast until I have all of my orders in place. 